The world thought Chernobyl was finally silent. A steel giant, taller than a cathedral, stood guard over the most dangerous ruins on Earth. But earlier this year, the silence cracked. A drone struck the shield. Now the question is terrifying. What happens when the only thing containing Chernobyl can no longer contain Chernobyl? For nearly 40 years, reactor number four has slept beneath the new safe confinement, the largest movable land structure ever built, a 2.1 billion euro fortress of steel engineered to last a century. But war doesn't care about engineering. Ukraine says a Russian drone hit the structure on February 14th, sparking a fire and tearing through its protective cladding. In seconds, a Cold War disaster collided with a 21st century battlefield. Think of the NSC as a massive metal lung. Its job? Breathe in danger and never let it escape. Sensors, filters, and steel layers trap radioactive dust still lingering from 1986. If that lung develops holes, even tiny ones, the entire system struggles. Radiation doesn't need a door to get out, just to crack. According to the IAEA, the strike caused severe damage, enough to break the shield's primary safety function, confinement. Temporary patches are holding, barely. The arch still stands, its skeleton is intact, but its armor is wounded. And the world suddenly remembers how fragile safety is. Without full restoration, the structure will continue to degrade. That means delays in cleanup, rising risk for workers, and potential release of radioactive particles. Chernobyl is not just a memory. It's a sleeping volcano we must constantly keep sealed. And now, for the second time in history, war has disturbed it. IAEA teams remain on site. Repairs are underway. But the truth is deeply unsettling. We built the strongest shield humanity has ever engineered, and even that wasn't strong enough to survive human conflict. The past isn't past, not when a single strike can awaken it. If this shield fails again, what do you think the world should do next? Tell me in the comments.